In this episode, I'm going to show you a little tool that I designed for use with my Proxon foam wire cutter. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. This is going to be a short little video because it's really only going to be useful to some of you and the, those who I'm speaking to are Proxon owners. If you don't have a Proxon Thermocut, which is the official name, I just call it my foam cutter. Uh, if you don't have a Proxon, this probably won't be all that useful to you, although you will, you, maybe you'll like that it exists if you're considering purchasing one. Uh, I cut a lot of foam with my Proxon. It's great for cutting straight lines, but there are two things, maybe more, that sometimes interfere with my work. One is when you're cutting thin pieces, sometimes your fingers are getting really close to that wire, or your fingers may cross the wire and you have to shift your hand. Anytime you move your hands on the Proxon, unless you're just really, really careful, inevitably you end up making a little divot or pausing just for a split second too long uh, at a certain spot, which will cause a little melting in the general area. One of the other nuisances that I've encountered is a lot of times when you want to use your Proxon, you need a straight edge. And the fence, you know, is, is straight, so you run your foam across it to get, you know, a straight cut. But what if you don't have a straight edge? Well, most of us, we just take a ruler and we just cut a straight line on the foam with a blade, and then we run it through the Proxon. But this little tool that I have here, one thing I've discovered is I can use it now to make uh, perfect 90 degree cuts that are, you know, perfect sharp edges, 90 degree edges on foam, uh, even if the edge of the foam is jagged. So let me show you what this is on the tabletop and then I'll tell you where you can download it. All right, I have my Proxon here and I have this jagged piece of scrap foam. Let me show you the little tool I designed. It's uh, it's 3D printed. I designed it in Tinkercad, and it's uh, it took a, it went through a couple iterations. I think this was the sixth printing before I got everything the way it I wanted it to work. But you may notice here you've got a little channel. This channel is to place over the fence here, and it slides nice and smooth. But it doesn't wiggle left to right. It's uh, the tolerance, uh, the width of the channel is right exact with the width of my fence here. The other thing you'll notice is these six little teeth. They're little pointy pyramids and they're they're somewhat sharp. They were sharp, very sharp when they came off the 3D printer. They've dulled just a little bit. What those are designed to do is to bite into a piece of foam and hold it so that you can just slide this at your, you know, at a, at a, at a standard speed. Um, one thing you'll, one thing that when you start using your Proxon is when you start pushing the foam through the wire, uh, sometimes you'll slow down or speed up, and believe it or not, it will cause little ripples in the edge. What's really nice is if you had a way like this to push that foam through at a consistent speed. Okay. The other thing this thing's useful for is you see this jagged edge right here. You know, normally if I want to get rid of that uh, and have a straight line to cut on. I would take a ruler, put it here, and then just slice it with my knife. But I don't have to do that anymore with this little thing. All I've got to do is, let's say I want to cut you know, as much of this jagged off, but you know, minimize the amount of waste. So what I can do is I can sort of eyeball this, and uh, just here's the wire. I, it, it's kind of hard for you to see, but the wire is lined up with this edge right here. Okay. So I want to just cut this off. So all I've got to do is put this on, and I realize I need to move it closer, okay? I lift this up, I move it over until I can bite into the, like that, I hear it. I don't know if you heard that, but I heard it. Turn it on and then just move it at a steady pace, like that. And I've got a nice straight cut. The other reason I love this over doing it with a blade is if you've ever cut foam especially half inch or thicker with a blade, if you're not cutting perfectly vertical, straight down, your, your, this face right here, this cutting, this edge that you cut, will, it will have a, you know, an angle on it. It'll be slightly in or slightly out. Because this wire is cutting perfectly perpendicular to the surface here, if you've, you know, if you've got it tuned right, 
you end up with a perfect cut like this. Now, what if I wanna make a 90 degree cut? Well, because this is straight, I can line this up. There's a grid on the Proxon table here. I can line this grid up with this, okay? Use this again and then make a, make a cut. Let's just say I need to cut a small one inch piece. So that looks to be about more than one inch right there. So I'll just put it right here. I'm looking at this from above and I'm lining this edge with the line, with the grid line as perfect as I can right there. So I come over, Oop, I messed up, let me see, right there, okay. I press it down to grab it. Now this one, I've only got a little, I've only got maybe one or two bites, so I'm gonna use it with my fingers on this side just to sort of move at the same pace. There we go. All right, 90 degrees, let's check it. I don't know if you can see it, but that's pretty close. So that's why I, I did it, and it only had one bite. You really technically need two bites so that it doesn't swivel. Um, I just happened to grab it on this side to support it. So at least two bites from, the, from these little needle things into the foam will keep the foam from twisting. I designed this in a half-inch version, half-inch foam, so that basically when, let me take this off and show you. So when the channel sits in here like this and the foam bites like that, the, the, um, this distance right here is, is how high it, it, this is from the tabletop or from the Proxon tabletop. I also designed a quarter inch foam version just like this with the needles. And it's just, this piece right here is just a little longer because you know the quarter inch is not as tall and it works the exact same way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the two files uh, for this available in the details below, description below, you'll find the link to download it. They're not big. This one took about, I wanna say it took about 30 minutes to print and your, your mileage will vary depending on the speed of your 3D printer. If you don't have a 3D printer, but you do have a Proxon and you want one of these, you could take this file and send it off to a company like shapeways.com or i.materialize.com and order it in whatever color and material you want. This is just PLA plastic. The other thing you'll want to be careful uh, about is this particular fence. I don't, think, I don't think Proxon has changed it. It's just a hair more than one, two, three, four, five eighths. It's, it's right between five eighths and three quarter inch. Um, hopefully your fence is the exact same width because that's what this channel uh, is designed for. I hope that it will work for you if you have a Proxon. Again, I really enjoy it because like I said, you just press down, turn it on, hold, hold the uh, fence so it doesn't move and just slide through at a consistent speed and you end up with this nice straight cut. I'm, I'm using this more and more rather than going to my blade. Now, one thing you do have to keep in mind is it does damage one side of the foam. So if you need both sides of the foam um, visible in whatever you're making, this may not work for you. But if, if only one side's gonna be shown, you know, do this on the side that's gonna be on the inside or hidden or whatever, and it won't mar the other side. So I hope you like this. I've got another thing I'm working on right now. I love the Proxon, and I know a lot of people who have Proxons love their Proxons, but we all have our little things that we just get irritated with. Again, it's a great machine, but one of the things I don't like is, and yours may not do this, but mine does, this fence is real easy to move. It doesn't have a way to lock it into place so it doesn't, doesn't shift. What I'm working on right now is something that I can use to insert on this side and on the other side that will pin it to the sides of the Proxon so it doesn't shift, so that when I'm pushing something through, I actually don't have to hold onto the fence. I can just one-handedly you know, move this and cut. So anyway, if you have any questions, post them in the description below. Uh, I'm, I definitely would love to hear your results on using it. If you find something you'd like me to add to it, I'm happy to do it. I thought about putting a little you know, thing to grab with your fingers on top, but I prefer to put my hand on it and move it through at a, at a certain speed rather than just you know using fingers. But glue something on top if you if you want something to hold on to. I have no name for this. It's just a foam cutting holder of you know, of sorts. And again, it's in half inch and quarter inch variety. 
So download it, print it out, use it, and let me know what your thoughts are. So there you go. Uh, two small little tools that you can 3D print and use. This is the half inch version. This is the quarter inch version. They're basically the same size. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If there's something, if you have a Proxon and you've got a minor annoyance and you, you'd like uh, a solution for it, let me know. Uh, I'm, I love doing these kind of things and coming up with things that make my life a little easier with the tools I use. Somebody might argue that, you know, hey, it's not that hard to cut with a knife and give yourself a straight edge. But, you know, I, so there, are, there are projects where I'm doing a lot, a lot of cutting. And this thing just makes it so much faster than taking the ruler and making sure you've got your perfect line and then cutting with the blade two, three, four cuts to get through it. This just with the heat set up just a tad higher than normal, just right through perfect cuts every time. So thanks for joining me and um, I'll see you in the next episode.